Andrew Hill from Sydney and proud to be part of the winning summit so thank you for the opportunity Mark and it's a pleasure to be talking about uh, a passion of tennis right on the eve of the Australian Open 2021. So I'm an Australian tennis coach based in Sydney and Mark contacted a few coaches all around the world uh, and with a word that we would like to use. My word today is challenge. Now uh, as part of Australia the Great Barrier Reef is one of the biggest living organisms in the world. Massive coral reef system seen from outer space and it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. The thing about this reef is the colour of the reef on the inside is just ordinary but the coral on the outside which is constantly bombarded with waves and, and, and struggles is the most beautiful in the world. So my word today is challenge and you'll see how that comes into even my own workplace. I've created like a little uh, collage of ideas here and uh, probably one of the key parts is I own a company called AJH Sports which I'll come back to but even in our logo Learn Play Challenge is a key component. Now um, one of the best roles that I've ever had was being head coach of Sydney International Tennis Centre in Sydney Olympic Park and we hosted the Leighton Hewitt Tennis Academy for 100, 200 kids around Australia who came and had a hit at uh, Sydney Olympic Park and it was all part of um, seeing a champion in action uh, what, what is it like to be a winner and actually immerse them in that energy so seeing how Leighton trained now we had the excellence of uh, Darren Cale and Tony Roach working with Leighton on court and Leighton was hitting with uh, 200 kids that day and at night he went to the Sydney Masters and he became number one in the world in front of all the kids he was hitting with on court. Now I don't think we'll ever be able to see something like that again but that was amazing. Uh, I was the one of the coaches in the team and it was just a privilege to be there. So that's at one end of the scale. Another end is the Sports Stars program. So when I saw the energy that Leighton offered to all these students, it's very hard to actually gain a tennis coach to come to, or a tennis player to come to schools. So I created a character called Sports Star. And Sports Star comes to schools with me. He gets kids healthy and active and is welcomed into most of the primary schools. And that's how we start to attract kids and grassroots to tennis. So we're actually using a multi-sport base and if you look down the bottom here I've just sort of put a, a normal fact there about 5% even less will play tennis in their life but 95% of kids will play sport. So this is a grassroots based program. Uh, it's something that's on the internet so you can easily use it at your own centre but the idea is with a greater base you will attract more champions or winners from the top. Uh, the word stars is also a pathway, so school, talent, area, region, state. It's a pathway from your school to Sydney Olympic Park, which is the home of the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. So we're very lucky to uh, have a pathway and uh, these sort of programs are actually assisting tennis coaches um, right around Australia. We also have another program that we wrote which is court sports, which is when they come to your tennis court how to play a whole lot of modified sports which will not harm your court and attract people to your centre and from that wide base I'm sure new tennis stars will be emerging. So that was actually quite a good system to um, go to schools, link schools back to the club and then through a, a nice simple pathway. Now with the idea of um, the stars system is there's also a rating which we'll come back to and on this particular one, this is just an overview. So we're doing a bit of a macro and then a micro view. So out of this whole slide, there's like karate belts. We have colors for kids as, and, and adults and special needs. We have something for everyone. But it's one pathway from beginner right through to elite or pro. The most important part of this one is the technical, tactical, mental, physical. It's sort of like the four components and today I'll be focusing on the mental components but there's uh, 20 mental components in there and with this 
macro view of what we do, it's something that helps our coaches, our parents, our students, all to uh, participate in a pathway. And they can do like a self-rating. And some of the later systems have algorithms that kids are choosing not to play. With a competency-based one, you'll normally find that they will try and achieve higher goals. So the competency-based is uh, an Australian system that works through your phone and actually works quite well with all our coaches and um, other states. Now with our tennis court today, we're racing across. This is a bit of an overview of how it works. So you have technical, tactical, and these are skills that kids or parents try and achieve and there's it's like a graph so you could have a big forehand uh, you could have a low volley and you stay on the baseline and it works and with the technical skills if you use your tactics so that you're using that sort of system these are actual things which are like a graph now in the mental and physical that will show you these are things that we give to parents and give to our coaches to actually help kids on court uh, and through match play so one of our essential parts is match play within our coaching organisation. There's 20 components and what you're doing is you're trying to tick these components and there's 20 physical components. You're trying to tick any of those things to make sure that you become a better tennis player. Now with the system, when we talk to the parents, we have a very general sort of system. And with parents we talk in letters, A grade, B grade, C grade. With coaches, we talk in numbers, which are a little bit more specific. And we have like general characteristics of where your kid is. Uh, someone can come in online and work out where they are. One of the most important parts is this purple section. A lot of these new algorithm systems don't involve a player before they hit a ball. And that's probably the greatest base of grassroots. So if we can actually make sure that the beginner is looked after and plays games, and there's many systems but um, this particular pathway starts from when they pick up a racket and they're just learning. Uh, this is what allows us to get into the primary schools uh, because we use a multi-sport component, but we also have a competency-based pathway that kids can learn skills and get stronger and stronger. So the, the system is, is quite simple for teachers and parents, but for coaches, we have a more in-depth one. Now this is, hyperlinks so all these things kids are trying to achieve if there's anything it's like their rating card and as as you can see you can sort of go up and down on different things but if you touch these blue sections you'll find that there are hyperlink videos of the current situation and one of the best things is to watch when someone goes into a different color they're right on the cusp and they have to do certain things so the tennis coach becomes someone who will help them achieve these goals uh, to become a winner just into that next section and the idea is there's really only one winner at the top but every personal pathway is a winning opportunity so you're trying to find the best game for you and you're using technical and tactical um, suggestions uh, sometimes a coach could get lost they don't know what to do we just look at a number and exactly where we are if there was a visiting coach uh, we actually do a coach training every Sunday and go through these sort of things. Uh, if any coach has any trouble with a progression of a student, we actually go over and have a look and uh, we can sort of assess it as a, a third pair of eyes. Um, the other one is uh, on wet weather, we actually use a lot of these sort of components and go through with the students so that we're helping them become a better player. With that in mind, we'll get into one of the four components which makes now going from the 20 attributes that we just talked about, I'll focus on four today. And we're still looking at the technical tackle, tactical, mental, physical, and the micro and macro approach. So as we get into these four, you'll find that a lot of especially with the mind, the elite programs have access to a psych professional psychologist. But the average coach, we don't have access to these um, resources, but we do have access to some of the notes. So Dr. Janet Young uh, put together the TCA Advance Manual. It's sort of like a Bible for our TCA tennis coaches. It was an absolute brilliant resource where we could actually uh, 
get students to think of their mental game in tennis. Now, one of those things, concentration. So when we were driving the other day, I had the students in the car going to a tournament and I was listening to their talk on about Doctor Who and Time Lords and you know, kids just talking as they do. And I just said in a very simple voice, did you realize I have a time machine? And nearly straight away, everything stopped and they wanted to listen in, where's the time machine? So I was using the analogy before getting to the tennis tournament of the concentration in the car zone is actually the present. And what we're looking at is we can talk tactics, whatever. But um, when I look in the rear vision mirror, I'm actually looking at the traffic that I've just passed, traffic lights, the whole thing. And when I look forward, I can see blocks up ahead. I can see if there's a, a traffic light changing, the whole lot. So the key component here is to try and stay in the present. And you'll find there's some components that we'll talk about later called flow. But um, to be able to focus and stay in the zone, this is one of the things that is in that uh, central area of being in the present. So nearly straight away we start talking about what we're going to do at the tournament so that we could visualize and so, sort of recap on some things before we got into match play. One of the components that is made up into um, concentration is broken into these four parts. Now, concentration is the action or power of focusing on one's attention. And you'll hear you know, a lot of the coaches will say focus now, uh, and, and have, we have to try and work out how to do that. So this is a study that was done quite a long time ago, Nidifa, and um, he sort of broke it down into four quadrants. And if you, when you start to know your students, you start to try and work out. So what we call external wide, is um, perceiving the other opponent looking you know where the ball is your court position uh, external or um, narrow is where you're only focused on the ball so you can actually see the brand of the ball when you're hitting uh, internal wide focuses on tactical patterns so you start to realize that they do a particular action and that will give you a few clues and internal narrow is visualizing the serve. So this could be actually done in the car, as I was mentioning before, but um, you can even bring it closer to the time with the actual action. Uh, just as they're getting ready, they're starting to read things um, where you can nearly predict where the ball's going to go. Uh, one of the key parts about emptying the mind uh, is, is very important for concentration or to focus on something that you believe would be a solution to the problem. With the mind, there are so many concepts, but one of my favorite concepts is when I was at uni, I had my uni lecturer was called CZ. You know, his full name is Sitsuma Hai. And when he was talking, I was there as a student, but also a tennis player. And he was talking about this action called flow. And while he's talking, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is something that I have nearly every day in tennis. And here's an Hungarian psychologist who visited Sydney UTS. And what he did is he came up with this idea of a highly focused mental state that's conducive in productivity. So to, to actually create action. He found that people are happiest and they're nearly completely absorbed and nothing seems to matter to that person when they're in a state of flow. Uh, to achieve a state of flow, there must be a balance between the challenge of task and the skill. So if I'm asking someone to do something with a different grip, I can actually take them out of flow. But one of the things I've found the fastest way to get into flow would be when someone does a fault and the person up the other end nearly relaxes thinking, I won't lose a point on this because it's, it's a fault. And they sometimes do the best response return to a fault and it's only a couple of seconds before that so flow is a, just a really good state uh, in the zone you'll hear those sort of things and you'll see this word challenge come in again the state in terms of a challenge level to your skill level so um, and you keep mastering that skill until and you keep pushing the challenge so that you just become better and better
Uh, one of the other things he talked about was intrinsic motivation, which was don't focus on the money, don't focus on the point score, just focus on to optimise and enhance your positive experience of what you want to achieve. If it's aiming for a line, that might be too hard, where you might want to aim over the low part of the net. So depending on the level of the player, and you'll see we've got some pretty good things that um, will show you that as tennis coaches that we look at. Now one of the other routines which was uh, a pleasure uh, in watching Leighton Hewitt, uh, he had one of the best in-between point routines I think I've ever seen. And uh, Nadal, you know, they're all up there, but it was just great just watching him on, on court, uh, in person, and one of the key parts of uh, this particular area is when we did the Leighton Hewitt Academy, we had kids trying to copy uh, the actions that are going on here. Now, at the start, it turned into like an acting role, but then once they started to understand it, we went through, uh, which is what I'll do with yourselves. So, a positive physical response, all right? And this one is an old document, so it's actually up to 25 seconds now uh, for ITF standards. So the, there is a little bit more time, and you'll see some of the players use that full time, bounce the ball um, seven times or more, uh, as, as you'll see, uh, to, to utilize those uh, time in between the point. Now, the first thing is a positive, positive physical response. And what we're looking at here is, you know, carry the racket by the throat so you're not dropping, letting the rocket drop. Uh, have a confident image so that you look as though you feel as though you're going to win, a high energy walk. These are all things that, uh, one, help you, but also your opponent will be also watching what you're doing. And it can sometimes um, have a, a very positive effect on, on your opponent. The relax and relaxation response is when you're not really focused on anything and you look down at your strings and it could be anything you could look at the ball but uh, the strings are a very good one and we use that we'll actually tell you a, a little secret that we use with some of our students who are, are struggling to focus uh, the next thing is when you're in this uh, you're looking down you then go into a like a march where you're trying to breathe control your breathing and your heart rate as you move uh, from one side of the court to the other uh, you might go and pick up a ball or have a ball thrown to you but you're getting into that response so that you're ready now there's only a few seconds in this so it has to be done and we do it as um, as a learning acting skill so that um, we can sort of uh, get them into the the process of doing it into a match uh, the next stage preparation you turn and face the net you're either serving or receiving your alert level increases and you might start to plan out what you would like to do. So it might be attacking a backhand or something. You're using a positive cue or you're picking a part on the court that you want to try and um, attack and there's nearly like a let's go idea when you're ready to go. Now the ritual, uh, which is just getting you just before you start, you do this routine, uh, serving or receiving, and you'll probably find that uh, for myself, I bounce the ball twice, uh, I swivel the racket in my hand, and they're things that just help me get into a uh, relaxed sort of situation. I've already controlled my breathing, but then I'm trying to focus on what I need to do. As a receiver, I normally tend to slay, sway from left to right, and it just helps me focus on what sort of things I want to do. If I'm a server, uh, those decisions might be, we, we train our younger ones, A, B, C system, so A, alleyway, B, the body of the court, service court, or C, the centre line. So you're trying to get, get them to make some decisions before actually get out there on court. Now there's a few other things that uh, are very important. So between first and second serves, you want to try and have that down pat. You've got a few seconds. As I said before, 25 seconds between points has changed. And there's a 90 seconds. Uh, one of the best people I see doing this is Nadal, where he has his drinks. Uh, sometimes you'll see them take a bite of a banana. It's all uh, designed to have endurance, especially if it's a five set match. The next part is, I'm not sure if you've ever seen people with a electrodes stuck to their head. 
and they used to do this a long time ago they used to do testing of the brain so there's a lot of talk on the brain that we're only using 5% of the actual brain and what we're trying to do with this one is the Herman whole brain model is a series of questions and what it does is it can actually instead of using the electrode system it actually asks you questions and it's very accurate as to uh, decisions um, it looks at the left and right side of the brain looks at cognitive thinking and emotional response and what's your intellectual response to uh, certain things um, and also how is how are your emotions uh, things like anger happiness and fear how do they come into fear of a fast ball or anger that I've missed something simple and then how to come back and get it into a simple system so these are in these four different components analytical experimental practical and relation um, and the whole idea is the player gets to know a little bit about themselves so it's just a, a, a test that you can do it is online, but it actually does help the player look at themselves and might understand you know, why they respond to certain things. So with that one in mind, here's some of the things that uh, you might find uh, in different things. So in the, in the blue quadrant, you've got logical, analytical, quantitative and rational thinking. And um, you'll find people will ask answer questions and then it'll sort of place them in different components in here and it's it's a really simple thing that you could do on a wet day you could do it as part of uh, pre-training um, and there's a whole range of questions that will actually uh, help the student understand themselves so if you do get a chance the Herman whole brain method is a great resource one of the we, we might do it as I said on a, on a wet day people still come along and you can still have a, uh, a quite a developed lesson where you're actually developing the brain. Now, we also have some good quotes like do it now and things like that. But one of our strongest ones is whether you think you can or you think you are, can't, you are correct. So with that in mind, we're trying to get the student to think about positive things. And as coaches, the ball's in your court and you'll hear it about um, be in and win there's all these sort of things to try and help you as a coach to help your students and um, but it's it's an amazing thing when you get positive attributes coming out on court it actually helps your student and turns them into the best player that they've got a chance to be thank you very much thank you for listening from sydney uh, all the best for all the players around the world at the australian open and if you would like to see a quick summary of our presentation, here it is. Yeah, hopefully you're not a speed reader, but um, the PowerPoint is on and video is on the Winning Summit. So thanks again, Mark. And uh, if you need any contact, please give me uh, contact me via email or you can go to my website. So thanks again, Andrew Hill signing off. Bye.